NFL free agency unhinged. Reading the Kingdom is back for a live episode on day two of free agency, even though it really kicks off officially technically tomorrow, but it's just been a, a whirlwind the last couple of days. And uh, mm-hmm. Coach and I are here to just give you guys some updates on all the, the insanity that's been going on throughout the league. How are we doing, Coach? We're doing good, man. My, uh, my week started off good Sunday. We obviously stone cold, stone cold. Oh, yeah. Uh, it re-signed with the Chiefs. I was gonna say oh. some other Stone Cold stuff, but I realized this is a family show, so I'm gonna, you know, try and do my best to uh, be uh, at least PG-13 with my words. PG-13, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Major, major deal. Uh, you know, five years, 160 million. Uh, I believe 93 million guaranteed. Uh, <clears throat> crazy, crazy money. But uh, some of these other deals that we've seen, even involving. Somebody will talk about that they joined the uh, Raiders. Uh, the defensive players are getting paid now, and they're getting paid yeah. big money. Granted, be a, be a defensive Donald, player. Don't don't be a running back. Be a be a right, right. So inside. being a you know, barring you know the Bosa and uh, Donald deals over the last couple of years, it's this this off season has just um, it's it's been crazy. But you, but we like we talk about having an end or having a stud D tackle. You got to have someone on your line to be dominant and uh, get to the quarterback. Otherwise, you're just you're just not going to win. It's just it's it's plain and simple. So you have to pay those guys. And uh, yeah, so we paid Chris Jones. I'm glad he got it done. He's I'm someone not, I didn't yeah, want to see cool. a go to you know go to the Raiders or anyone else. I really just felt like he was he's a core chief player. You know, in a, in a sense of like a. Uh, in like a Derek Thomas, you know, God rest his soul, but he is just embodies that, that grit and defensive mentality that you want to see at Arrowhead and on the road. And I'm just glad he's, I'm glad he's staying. And, and we got Drew Tranquil back too, who I love. And that, that's my low key. That might be my next Jersey. Drew got that 23. That's, you know, I'm a Jordan kid. Um, So we'll, we'll see what the next Jersey is, but it, it, it could be Drew or it could be Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Chris Jones, cause he's back. So I love it. Yeah, I was upset at that one, especially knowing the Raiders were in the defensive tackle market. And what we've seen over the last couple of days is a lot of these players are not afraid to go to an interdivisional rival, which just blows my mind. I, I guess that's part of it. But, um, you know, the, like we're seeing with Aaron Jones and Saquon Barkley, they they don't mind uh, just skipping across the uh, the street yep. to, to a rival. Which, the if you had told me that, that Aaron Jones would be a Viking this week, I would have slapped you in the face uh, the, the vikings do it better than anyone as yeah. far as like getting getting former packers or just uh rivals and having them join them in minnesota uh so you know it i'm yeah, Aaron took Jones. Darius smith from the packers not too long ago yeah aj 33 and then obviously brett Favre back in the day aj 33 yep. when he goes back to lambo this season i would imagine he'd be a good guy to pick the over on as far as yards and all that stuff that goes along with it because I think he's got you know he wants to prove some things. Well, we got to see what they end up doing at quarterback too because that's a whole nother question. But that's we have a whole little quarterback section to get into today because there there's there's a lot of question marks after what's been going on. And coach and I are going to keep up on the news because if anything breaks while we're here, it's just it's insanity. Um, so as we were talking about, so the the Chiefs made kind of some limited moves. I mean, they they kept Chris Jones, which every Raiders fan does not want to see. Um yeah, we Cam kept we got, kept Chris Jones. Excuse me, we kept Rick Tranquil. Tranquil. Uh, Deion yeah. Bush resigned. Good depth piece. You know, special teams. You know, a guy that can go out there and play safety if needed. Um, and we signed Irv Smith, one year, one and a half million. Uh, I've heard through uh, kind of through the grapevine on, on on Chiefs Twitter, some guys who are a little bit more connected than me are than than I am, and we are uh, that there's a potential that Noah Gray might be retiring. Uh, the Chiefs are not a hundred percent sure on that, so I think Doesn't getting Irv Smith sense. in there, uh, yeah. you know, is 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 a good option. He's more of an offensive guy than you know a Blake Bell, who's a free agent. I don't know if they'll uh, <clears throat> re-sign him, but I mean, he's he's a good he's your blocking tight end, right? He's not a necessarily a guy who's going to catch a bunch of balls. So we'll see. But I think Irv Smith will be able to take a little bit of pressure off of uh, Travis, and he's he's still he's decent. He's athletic. And he can catch the ball, and that's what we'll need, especially if Noah Gray decides to to hang it up. Jack, it's just kind of interesting when it seems like he could be the heir apparent to Travis Kelsey if that's something he was into. 
Um, when yeah, but comes. like, dude, it's the wear and tear of this game. Um, I forgot who it was a couple years ago. Is that that uh that uh 49ers linebacker, a white dude, uh, who had uh, I think he was like his second year or potentially he's even his rookie. I think he won like defensive rookie of the year or like, again, it was like you know what I'm talking about, right? Is he the Probably. one that popped up in the Aaron Hernandez documentary? He might have. Um, he quit foot. He quit football because he was concerned about CTE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, so it, it, it happens, man. These, I think they realize long term. He's like, out in Wisconsin, actually. One of my relatives met up with him at at a bar. He's oh, just really? a mutual friend situation, and yeah, he said he doesn't regret it for a minute, and he's just spending all of his time working on educating NFL players yeah, and retirees. And it's it's, you it's know, wild. I can't remember yeah. his name. You'll like me. I can't think of his name either, but he, he was, yeah, he was a stud and he, you know, he was going to get a big contract and all that. And he's like, nah, I'm good. So I respect that. And if Noah Gray feels like he doesn't want to, um, the, the wear and tear of, of, of getting hit every day and, and the long-term effects that go along with that. I mean, he's won two Super Bowls. Yeah. That's not, you know, that's so not he, he hasn't deal. done bad in his first couple of years in the NFL. So, uh, you know, more power to him if he decides to, we appreciate his contributions. Fair enough. So there's for Raiders fans listening. So the Chiefs kind of kept some core members there. You're not going to see these teams that, like, for example, just won a Super Bowl or like the Niners. You're not going to see a ton of moves. If anything, they're going to make some adjustments, possibly cuts to compensate for the cap. Um, the Chiefs did not certainly get any weaker um, in in free agency, and they still have the draft. And, and we all know, unfortunately, how Brett Beach cooks in the draft. Mm hmm. So we'll see how that goes. And, and free agency is not over. There's still a bunch of pieces well, out there. But. There's a lot of time left. You know, we're still in on Hollywood Brown. Looks like Ridley was a guy I was hoping that they could maybe get after. Um, looks like his potential. He goes back to Jacksonville. The Pats but, you know, won Drew, on him too, but yeah, I don't think Drew, he wants Tranko to go last there. Last year was, was, you know, wasn't a signing on the tampering period, the legal tampering period. So you just give him time, whether it's, you know, I see Curtis Samuel, uh, I, I'm glad we didn't give Daryl Mooney, Darrell Mooney, 13 Darnell million a year. Mooney. Yeah, Darnell Mooney. It's you get the point. Um, That's what I'm getting. <laughs> you get the point. I, get the I point. don't think he's worth 13 million. So Brent Beach no. will cook. I think he'll. We'll get someone here in the in free agency. Probably a couple guys to come in and compete, and then draft somebody. But I'm not worried about it. I, I knew this. Getting Chris Jones back was 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 the most important thing. I didn't. I feel like he was the top free agent out there. So we keeping him is is a win for me. So I I don't care if we're um, not super active right now. We'll we'll make the moves we need to. People want to come gaze and play. Of course they do. And um, you know, we we kind of. Ex- I really didn't think Chris Jones would bounce out. I mean, he was. If Mahomes was the MVP or Super Bowl, it should have been him. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what's yeah. kind of expected now. Then when you see teams that are. Middle of the road, guys, like the Raiders, we see hopefully see some bigger moves. And there were uh, quite a lot of them yesterday. Um, I was a very busy guy. You were busy at work, but I was just blowing up your phone with, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. What the heck's going mm-hmm. on? Um, so they started. We kept Andre James, our center. Not the greatest, not the worst. He knows the system. The offensive line was top 15 last year, so so that's fine. He he did have a couple games where we might be a little bit concerned and, and uh, you know, hopefully some, some things get fixed this year. Um, but you know that's that's a you know he seems like a good locker room guy. The team likes him, whatever. Keep so Andre James stays. Then the big one breaks. We had thrown up a tweet not long before. Hey, today would be a great day to sign defensive tackle Christian Wilkins. We showed just a little clip of him. He's ripping off. Um, I think somebody on the Vikings. He just ripped off their towel, just kind of being a jerk and, and throwing it. And then a couple hours later, Raiders signed Christian Wilkins, um, four years, hundred and ten mil, fifty seven million guaranteed in the first year. A lot of money, um, but he's a run stopper. He had nine sacks last year. He's a locker room guy, a leader. This was a player I had circled kind of early on in free agency. We needed a more a little more depth up the middle. And he's, oh, my God, I mean, Mad Max, Christian Wilkins, Malcolm Koontz, if Tyree Wilson wants to come to party, um, the Raiders' D-line is cooking. Um, and, Very and they, much so. You know, this, he's, another, he's another fit for um, what Antonio Pierce is trying to accomplish. And, you know, the, the Raiders defense has never had anyone shaking their boots in quite a while. They definitely turned it up a notch last year. Um, I'm not going to mention the game heard around the world, Coach. I think you've heard enough of that. The, um, on it, Christmas it, Day when you guys won your Well, Super I wasn't going to mention it. Yeah, when we won our so, Super Bowl. Do, do you think they're going to place Watkins and um, – Wilkins. Wilkins, Wilkins, excuse me. Wilkins and Crosby on the same side? So they were lining up 
when they moved Tyree Wilson inside, they were lining him up on Max's side, and I think to kind of give him benefit of the doubt, I wouldn't be I would be more apt to see him lined up on Kuntz's side. So right side of the D line, I guess the the QB's left side, um, yeah. to give him a little extra help over there because Max can handle it. And you know, and Malcolm Kuntz definitely came up in the the second half of the year. Great question. Um, I'm kind of curious what they're going to do with Tyree Wilson now because the edge is kind of set. He wasn't drafted as a D tackle. He was more effective last year inside, but he was also when I and as as I've said, I watch every single one of his snaps. He was his at his best when he was lined up next to Max because obviously Max taking the double teams, or even if it's single, the guy you know is going to go around to to go and help out the right tackle with Max. Is he? Um, at, do you think he's athletic enough to potentially be like an outside linebacker? Just an absolute monster. Uh his speed was one of the biggest concerns last year, so I'm going to say no. For yeah. right now, I'm going to say no. Right. But we all know, as you you know, you know more about him than I did when the Raiders drafted him. Um, he was well, he's, just, he's, an athlete, he's an athletic freak. Uh, you know, you pick him seventh, so you he's you got have that, to hope in year that and, length. Yeah, that length <clears throat> in year two, Antonio Pierce. And uh, Graham will do enough to to figure out how to use him. They probably won't use him as much as you would necessarily want for a seventh round pick or a seventh a seventh, seventh pick in the draft a year ago. They'll yeah. figure it out. One thing we know is that people get injured, and depth is so important that um, you know it's 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 essential that you have them. And I mean, I think at his peak, he he played like. 75% of snaps, if that, um, one, one or two games. So he's a rotational piece, but yeah, yeah, he, he's gotta, he's gotta make some strides. Cause you know, we, you're coming off an injury, you're a rookie, we get it. Let's see some, some dividends pay off. And it's also something to keep in mind that he was not, um, you know, Antonio Pierce obviously was on the defensive coaching staff, but I don't know how much input he had into a draft pick. So once again, he's, this is his, this is team now. He's going to make the. He's going to have some input on the picks. We'll see what they end up doing. Um, but so Christian Wilkins, Raider Nation, just going absolutely bananas over that as they should. Um, then this is where things kind of started to get a little bit messy. So Josh Jacobs, I don't know how much this affects you as a Chiefs fan, is no longer a Raider. We heard they were working. We all kind of knew. Well, not we all kind of knew, but you and I knew based on what we've seen. Jacobs is following the money. I think um, even though he has that Raiders tattoo. What he seemed to covet more than anything is that cash. Yeah, you got to pay for a lot of after- kids, and it, and it looks right. like from his from his deal is like first year. Obviously, there's a guarantee on money, and then three option years. So I wouldn't be shocked if he has a big year. He goes, you know, uh, takes his own option and just decides to go try and make more money again. I think he. I think if you're a top flight running back, that's not a bad idea. Just be a hired hitman yeah. year to year. If you got to, tr- it doesn't matter. You got to make money. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> you maybe get two or three contracts at most. You know, Saquon got paid. That was a crazy deal. Um, but you look at like what Cincinnati did, going a lot cheaper and getting a Zach Moss rather than a Joe a Mixon. Um, and Dallas, you know, Dallas got no money, but they they you know they lost Pollard, which it makes no sense what Tennessee's doing on that end. But that's you know a, a different story. Uh, you know, they didn't. They thought the. Four million was 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 too much, and then you see King Henry go to uh, Baltimore for eight million eight million a year. Obviously, he's got some wear and tear, so I, I'm not totally. I think he was he he got his big payday. He wasn't gonna get Saquon money, um, but uh, yeah, the running back market is kind of crazy. So you got to go out there and you got to get paid. We're having we're having technical difficulties here. Not technical we're good. difficulties. We're we, good. We've got the we got the young guns coming in there wanting to yeah. see dad checking in on the show. Check it in the show. They'll eventually here in a couple of years. They'll be they'll be our special guests. Uh, little, although that little, although the one yeah. that was at the door is a Steelers fan, so I don't know how much. Oh no, he's, he'll become here. a Chiefs fan. He'll be a Chiefs mm, fan. No, no, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, what, what was DeAndre Swift? Seven mil average? Uh, yeah, I think DeAndre Swift was seven or eight mil, which I was I was pretty surprised about that in the Chicago market. Uh, I think it was three years, twenty four million, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. Don't necessarily quote me on that, but. Uh, an interesting move by the Bears. I didn't think Swift was going to be an eight million dollar a year guy, no. but here he is. They probably had to take into account though that he was he was running behind one of the best offensive lines in the league. There might be a little something to that besides just his natural innate ability to uh to run the ball. Um, so Jacobs goes to the Packers. It looks like we're handing the keys to Zamir White. 
Um, Zamir you, doesn't seem like. Do you, do you think he's? They're going to draft someone or pretend? I don't. There's really no one else left to get running back wise that could come yeah, and make no. an impact. I, I was kind of hoping Aaron Jones might come over and that would be a great mentor for Zamir White. Uh, I know. He's yeah, I just don't think Zamir is a, a three down back. So I think you might have to. Uh, Amir Abdullah is still somebody. is still on the roster. Um, I think they will draft somebody. Um, I they honestly, will. you know, you know, and the uh, first, I think probably round three would be my. I mean, I think Zamir White was a third round pick last year. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they look they look that. And there's always the post you know June first cap cuts and stuff too. So we'll we'll see then. But they definitely need to bring in some more guys because I think Zamir White's a good change of pace back. Uh, he could improve, I guess, this off season and and, and get better. But I, I just don't see him as a three down guy. No, he stepped and he stepped up big time for the last three games of the season, which I thought it was suspicious that Jacobs wasn't playing. And I know they said there was an injury, but he couldn't go for like he couldn't muster it up for um for the Chiefs game, which is a big one. And then the remaining games that we needed to uh to get to the playoffs. And obviously it didn't work out because we lost to Indy. Um mm-hmm. which leads me to our, our next signing. So Jacobs is gone. I mean, it it is what it is. He was a he's a great running back. He's part of our little intro video that you all saw. Um, and he set some records down in the books for the Raiders, but uh, we always kind of thought that money was his number one goal as opposed to the, the greater mission. So it is what it is. Chase your money and do your thing. But we also knew some unsightly news is lingering out there that, you know, he may or may not have said on Twitter. He's reaching out to a family that all wore number eight uh, jerseys at a funeral, and he never actually reached out to the family, but took all the Twitter kudos. Um, and I actually talked to the guy whose family member that was, um, that passed away. So I kept that in the back of my mind. I'm not really all that sad. He left. That's, that's kind of a, a scumbag Shitty move thing. there. Yeah. Just, I think it's a character thing. And, um, you know, I, I think we have some other players on the team that would show up and, and show out and do whatever they had to do. I think all the guy wanted was a phone call to his father. Um, cause his mom passed away. You know, one, one thing that I've realized, uh, when it comes to sports and these athletes and stuff like that is this, they, they don't really owe us anything. Yes, we're fans and we're and we're here to like, you know, essentially pay them. But they their job is to perform on the field. They can take I I think it's definitely the wrong uh the wrong thing to do is to to take credit, but like they're a lot of these guys' character is very questionable in and of itself. So you gotta take yeah. all that with a grain of salt. Um, do. And, and I don't think he has the responsibility to do that. But if you're going to go out there and say, hey, oh, yeah, 1,000, 1,000. Oh, God, you're such 1, a great guy. Percent. Look at everything yeah. you've done for this guy and his family. And then I'm out. Yeah. And then, yeah. You but know, I, I think we kind of all knew Jacobs was judging by his past and what he's done and how he. Well, his humble beginnings, I honestly didn't picture any kind of issues. And then, you know, well, we had a, he... an alleged DUI crash thing after one of the games in Oakland. And, um, you would kind of think coming from those humble upbringings that we'd be a humble, he had a humble guy. upbringing, he but it, it didn't, I don't think it humbled him. He was, yeah, we don't need to talk about know. him anymore. He, he's gone. He's, he's, he's out of, he's out of the Correct. I'm, we're moving on to who is, who's still a member of the nation. Yeah, who's um, in black and silver. Yep. Right. We also lost to Meek Robertson, um, cornerback, smaller guy, but he had that game winning pick against, um, against the Packers. That was a, a, a nice moment for us. Um, that was against Christian Watson who had like six inches on, on him. So, um, he will actually be missed. He was a dog. Um, Jimmy G is going to be gone any day now on his release. But as I said before, what was kind of heating up the conversation was, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Justin Fields is out there, right? Yep. Um, we're kind of wondering what what the deal is with him. We have some Raiders fans that think he could be a possible answer. Um, you know, I want nothing to do with that. And I'm getting more nervous. Some of the beat writers are saying that they're kicking the tires on it. I don't know if that's just because they saw one person spark a rumor that Fields was looking to the Raiders. I'll just summarize it very quickly. Has yet to play a full season. Has yet to throw more than 2,500 yards. Ball security issues. Fumbles. Picks. 40 40 touchdowns with 30 interceptions. We're kind of giving him the Derek Carr treatment where we're making excuses. He's only gotten three seasons. We gave Derek Carr nine seasons of excuses before we finally cut bait. And I was a Carr fan. I still like the guy. Um, but I've, I've seen the, the mistake be repeated, and I'm not here for it. Justin Fields can can run. No one's going to dispute that. But in this league, you got to do both, and I don't think he can. So I wanted no part of it. I don't think he's a long-term answer. He's a Band-Aid. Let him stay in Chicago or do whatever. So I get, I'm extremely nervous. Sounds like he's coming to, to Las Vegas. They signed Gardner Minshew for, on a two-year deal. Bang, bang, bang. Everyone says, oh, my God, you know, 
Um, Devontae Adams didn't come here for Gardner Minshew. I don't believe he's a starter. I believe he's a high-paid backup. I think he's one of the best backups in the league. He essentially started for Indy last year because of Anthony Richardson. So he's here on a two-year deal. I don't recall exactly how much, 28, 28 million or something, 14 a year, maybe. If, if I read that correctly. No, that can't be right. Uh, let me yeah, find no, that. I don't think that's right. I think it was like eight. I think he got paid like eight million. I thought it was more. Um, but anyways, um, so I don't think Raider Nation needs to freak out about Gardner Minshew. I don't think he, I think he's going to be the starter if um, if something bad happens or we do get a rookie and he doesn't pan out. But I think very much this shows that we're not getting um, we're not getting uh, Justin Fields. I don't think we would do two two, two veterans. years at twenty five. Two years, twenty five. So he's getting. He's only twenty seven, uh, dude. He's he, people yeah, yeah. hate on him, but he he did good I'm in Jacksonville. He's he, good around. So I I don't I think if if anything you find you'd go up and you draft a Penix or a uh, Daniels and you have him start a year. I don't think that's those, the worst. Those are the two I would I would uh, I would circle up would would be Penix or obviously Jaden Daniels is is the one I think I think we're people want to argue with me and say it, but I think I really think we're a quarterback away. I really do. Um, I think there's a, both units are are in a stable enough place where they could be successful. Um, but the Justin Fields thing is a bit mind boggling. You see some of these other guys going like Jacoby Brissett went to the Patriots. Uh, Marcus Mariota goes to the commanders. Jameis Winston goes to the Browns. We see a lot of these backups coming and going. And uh, now it's almost like the draft. Like remember Justin Fields was kind of projected to be in that top three group with uh, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, mm -hmm. et cetera. And he's just, now he's not never he must i mean he probably thought he was going to go somewhere yesterday um yeah. i don't know if you had it you had any thoughts on his situation or oh, what mac you jones? think is going to happen no not mac jones i don't care about him he's in jacksonville on justin fields uh, oh justin fields oh sorry yeah. about that uh you know I, I don't i don't know if if I've, you know, I've seen some people say like you know if i'm the bears draft caleb williams and start justin fields just to see if he can finally get it together I don't know. They're 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 in a very tough spot. They're not going to get what they want for him. Uh, you know, his, his market has plummeted. Yeah, especially you know, I could you know even like I think Justin Fields' best bet is to like go be a backup somewhere. Uh, but that's then you've got that, that fifth year option. So I, I don't I don't know. It's it's a very uh, it's I just I don't know. Yeah, well, then it brings up the be... question: Is are they are they going to hold on to him? and they're going to trade the first pick to the Commanders? Like who who knows what's we once again we need the Bears to do something. They the have Bears, to trade Fields and show us the way. The Bears you know, control like, the draft one thousand percent. So oh my god, they do. It's, it's crazy. driving me nuts. Could you just do something? The little stick picture. Do something already. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Ryan Poles. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, just. Yeah. Figure it out one way or the other. So that's mm -hmm. where we're at. everyone's wondering what's going to happen with Justin Fields. I'm literally refreshing Twitter right now just to see if we get any more, any more, um, any more info. You know, um, what is that? Joe Mixon. We already know that. Why are you sending me that now? Seventh round pick for Joe Mixon. That's wild to the Texans. Um, today, I thought they just, just cut him. So at least they got something. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco was a seventh round pick, so they're not complete garbage. Brock Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant. No, yeah, so. no, it's just crazy. But you, do you think about what they had to to pay for to to get him out of there? It's just, uh, it's just, it's wild that the way this is going. Um, so that's really what the Raiders are at. I don't expect to see them make too many more too many more moves. Um, I'm really happy with what they did. I, I've read a lot of um, you know winners and losers post free agency. And I was surprised the Raiders were on there for really anything. I think people love the Wilkins signing. They all said it was very expensive, and that's what you have to pay to get a player like that. Um, so I'm not mad about it at all. Um, but this whole, uh, you know, Sam, even Sam Darnold and Drew Locke found teams today, and Justin Fields is not. So it's just it's an interesting situation. Um, we're going to do some uh, bigger, biggest loser and biggest winner. Loser. Uh, we'll each pick one team for each. Coach, why don't you? My up. biggest loser is <laughs> my biggest loser. My biggest loser my is biggest loser. the Carolina Panthers. Um, Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Yes. The if you there's there's a you know you can look through Twitter on just the David Tepper um, decision making the last couple of years. Right. You know, gave up all those picks to get Bryce Young. They're ending up with the number one pick again. Could have had Caleb Williams. Right. Uh, 
they trade more. Uh, they trade Burns and they trade McCaffrey. All these guys before they're like 27 years old uh, when they're hitting their prime. And, you know, they, they missed out on getting Burns potentially two years ago for two first round picks. So they traded him for a second and a fifth. Um, and I think they ended up paying more for uh, Sam Darnold than what they got for Brian Burns. And then Brian Burns and go signs a massive deal with the Giants. The, the Carolina has done uh, a couple things. They've not done anything to really improve. They've done something to improve their offensive line, right? They got Robert Hunt and they got uh, Damian Lewis, two solid guards, which makes me think like the Chiefs are going to have to pay Trey Smith here soon. And I don't know if they're going to be able to pay him, especially with what these, what these guards are making. Uh, that's a discussion for another time. So they're doing what they can to try and protect Bryce, but Who's their best weapon? I can't tell you. Is it Adam Thielen still? I mean, I, I don't know. God. So it, it's it. They're they're in a very tough spot. Uh, they had a lot of cap space, but they've they've hindered themselves so much with um, giving up so much to get Bryce Young and then not surrounding him with the right pieces. So to me, the Carolina Panthers have had the worst off season so far. Hopefully, they can they can make some moves, but. Uh, yeah, the AFC South now is 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 Atlanta's division. Yeah, with with Kirk in there, and I'm happy for for some of those guys. Um, you know, Kyle Pitts is a, is a good dude, and Drake London and Bijan Robinson to hopefully be used correctly. Um, but that's a solid one. You brought that up uh, pre-show, and I I kind of wish I had thought of that one. It, it seemed to, yeah, they they are doing some things there, and the longer I think if, if Tepper wants to keep his hands off, maybe that will. Uh, change things around, but it doesn't seem like he's inclined to do that at any point in time. Uh, biggest losers for me, I struggled with this one just because there seemed to be so many options, but I'm going to pick our good old friends in New England, the Patriots. They're just doing Patriot things. Them and the Jaguars love to just covet uh, mediocre, subpar, below average uh, type players. Really, the, um, I did see, I think they kept Joss Uche on a, on a on a tight deal. So I'll give them that, but their first two moves were to keep Kendrick Bourne and re-sign Jalen Rieger. Uh, the Kendrick Bourne thing, he's like the 150th ranked wide receiver in the league. If, if you want to just go off his stats, those guys, none of them could separate for anything. I saw Devonte Parker just got signed by somebody else. I don't remember who it Eagles. was. Eagles. There you go. Um, but none of them can separate. They're not game changers. I know that there's, Rumors that the Patriots might take trade down and take a receiver instead of a quarterback. But it sounds like they may, you know, obviously they got rid of Mac Jones, which is probably good. Mac Jones needs trade to change the scenery. Um, but now there's rumors they may release Bailey Zappi. I don't know what their plan is. They just seem, they're just obsessed with mediocrity. I, it's fine with me because you and I are done with them. We've been done with them since we were kids. Um, right. Growing up in New England and it, trapped by their success which is obviously no longer a thing um but i'm just talking it's they're just not an exciting team they're they're not um i feel bad for matt judon because he's an, an animal and uh kyle duggar you know their linebacker hybrid safety whatever you want to call him um he's a free agent i don't know what they're doing with him but i don't know they just they like to be average and that's fine but they're that's why i think they're one of the bigger losers um in free agency yeah now, Coach, give me a winner. Let's get on the bright side of things. Who's uh, a winner, winner man? I, I I really like what the Steelers have done, man. Uh, you know, you bring in Russell Wilson on on pretty much nothing, right? It, it, he'll be better than uh, um, than Kenny Pickett. His hype video. I don't know why he keeps doing this, but that was I didn't watch just, it. Was it was it awful? <laughs> Russell Wilson. He, they're they're really Russell. struggling with with a nickname for him. I yeah. thought Danger Rust. Because like rusty steel, danger rust. Uh, he's like, let's weld. <laughs> uh, oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, dude, stop. Uh, but then you get Patrick Queen to team up with T.J. Watt. That just increases even more the Ravens Steelers rivalry, and so I think that'll be that'll be cool. I think those are those are solid moves. Uh, but I like what the Steelers have done. I like. Who else do I like? I like obviously what my Chiefs have done, just keeping their guys. Um, Falcons else? adding Kirk, we all like that. Yeah, Kurt and Mooney, uh, uh, you know, uh, good good moves for Atlanta, separating themselves in a very winnable division. So they're going all out for uh, 
Mr. Arthur Blank. He's he's on the tail end of that ride we call life. And, you know, I think they could – the NFC is just not – the. I think Kurt's probably the best quarterback in the NFC. Arguably. Jalen Hurts, yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, I, I think you're about you're about right there. I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm totally off on that statement. Uh, so I think we'll see. But, yeah, in. I like what Atlanta's done, and I like what the Steelers have done. Yeah, that's, that's solid. And, I, and people say, oh, you know, they're t- talking about the overpay with um, – quarterbacks now and, and who you want to blame for that resetting the market, but it, it is what it is. And I think that's something they needed to do. Um, they've been having a lot of, you know, struggles with the quarterback position down there. And although Desmond Ritter helped me win a G last year, thank Desmond throwing all those picks. Um, this is a necessary move. And, and Kirk before he got injured was playing pretty well last year. And he had that amazing comeback the year prior. Um, I think it was a good move for them. Um, the winner I'm going to go with, despite them taking a Raider, I'm going to go with the Packers. I think they had two big needs with A.J. Dillon's contract. He's an unrestricted free agent, um, but really didn't have a great year. Um, and then their safety, that was a huge area of need for them. Darnell Savage left. Uh, he was signed by someone else. I don't remember exactly who. Um, but they got Xavier McKinney from the Giants, paid him some big money. And then, obviously, they took Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. Uh you know, Phil fills the need. He's he's far younger than Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones did have some health problems, but just the influence of not having Aaron Jones in the locker room is a big one. And now they, you know, Dave Bakhtiari's gone, as we all can guess. He's probably going to go to the Jets. Um, but I think they still address two big areas of need on that team. Um, they have a couple more things to accomplish in the draft. Um, but Jordan Love is looking strong, and uh, I think I think address your need and get the best available. And they got probably one of the top three running backs available and they got arguably the best safety available in free agency. So good move for the Packers, our former co-host Austin, who's probably not listening. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I think they did pretty well. Like you said, I like the Falcons as well. I think they made some smart moves. Um, my buddy that's a Giants fan is just in shambles right now uh, with Saquon de- departure, but the Brian Burns, is a nice deal for them. So I'm not the going to add them gonna, to my gi- winners. Giants, but. Yeah, Giants are going to be uh, built like they were stu- They used to be, right? The Giants won their Super Bowls. There, there was, was their defense that won on their Super Bowls. It wasn't. I mean, Eli Manning didn't lose them games, but they didn't have. I mean, they had Plexico Burris. So I, I think yeah. Slayton and some of these other guys are going to have better years. Um, They'll probably and, draft uh, neighbors or um, Roma Dunze. Yeah, I think they get a receiver. I don't think they go JJ McCarthy. I think they're no, they've learned their lesson there. Uh, but I talked to a Vikings guy. fan today who said he wants JJ McCarthy. So you can have him. That's fine. Go ahead and take him. Yeah, because you're not it's, trotting it's, out Sam Darnold or Justin Jefferson. Be asking for a trade by week one if he hasn't. He doesn't ask for he, one before. Yeah, he that. just followed uh, Mahomes. He followed. Stop. Yeah, let's put that out right there now. Justin Jefferson is not going to Kansas. City. Okay, if Justin Jefferson goes to KC, I get a Justin Jefferson jersey. 100%. Here, you got a pen? Signing it. Yep, signing it. Uh, I do that, yeah. And if Jaden Daniels goes to the Raiders, JD5 on my back, my friend, you're buying. Um, breaking news. Jordan Elliott to the Niners. That's not breaking news. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, but, yeah, that's free agency right now. Um, watch something break in the next five minutes while we're gone. But uh, it's been exciting. It's been wild. Um, I think the Raiders did a good job. The Chiefs put down who they needed to. You're not going to see these the, the playoff teams do a, a ton of work because they're already paying these quality players. That's why they make it deep in the postseason. Um, I'd maybe like to see the Raiders at a corner or something like that in the, in the next day or two. But besides that, we're finally making some way to pave a bit of a clearer picture to the draft. Um, but Coach and I, Coach nailed it on the head. He said the, the Bears, if you weren't listening earlier, the Bears – can, they have the the draft by the cojones right now. They do, and uh, they, they, they need control to, it. They need God make a decision. Please. And you know, I, I think this is this is the key thing here. Uh, I think the key thing we obviously know the Bears are are key in what they're going to do, but I think even maybe necessarily more key than that is what the Commanders will do because I've seen the Commanders really like Jaden Daniels. Um, Dude. So if they go Jaden or they go Drake May, I don't know. Like I said, if I'm the Patriots, and I said this, and this was, and I'm not going to take full credit for this. I, I heard it from a Boston area uh, talk show guy. You know, just listen to Mad Dog Radio. Shout out Mad Dog, uh, JT the Brick, Brick at Night. 
our boy JT is JT is a big uh, Mad Dog guy and one of the OGs. But under the show, how you know the Patriots drafting a quarterback, you are going to have the exact situation that you have right now with Bryce Young, and putting a brand new quarterback in a situation like that where it's like very uh, there's no talent around you. Right. Uh, if, if, if I'm the Patriots, you're going to suck for a couple years because you just don't have talent. You draft a Marvin Harrison Jr. You may be in the second round, third round. You you take a chance on a Sp- Spencer Rattler. Uh, Devin Leary is like a guy who was at NC State, played at Kentucky. He's going to be a day three pick. I think he's going to have a good pro day at Kentucky. I think someone like him. He's got good mechanics. He's got good arm. Uh, he's just got some questionable decision making. That seems like a guy to me that the Patriots could potentially like. I think he, he might even go undrafted, but I think he'll make an NFL roster. Mm. But what I'm getting at is the Patriots do not need to draft a quarterback in the top three because they're going to be there next year too, and they they might have a better chance of finding the right quarterback. I just mm. don't think they're ready yet. They need to draft the top notch wide receiver and build out that, that whether it be the O-line and other skill positions, they resigned Hunter Henry, but that's their offense right now is Hunter. Like Kendrick yeah. Bourne. Yeah. That's not Hunter Henry is the best offensive player. Kendrick Bourne right and Jalen Rieger. No, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. So to, to bring in a young quarterback, you saw what happened with Bryce young. You can't, you, to me, you just, it's just, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to draft someone, just don't play them. But then you're going to get – he's a top three pick. You got him. So you're in a tough position. But if I'm them, you go get a all-world wide receiver and Marvin Harrison Jr. You go with that. You try and maybe sign a veteran quarterback uh, and just draft somebody in the later rounds and, and see how that rolls. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But that – that long story short, that all tails into what potentially the Raiders will do as far as right. trading up goes. I don't know. But we need the Bears to make a move. If the Commanders are going to trade up to one because they want Caleb Williams, that would make me happy. If the Commanders had taken Justin Fields yesterday or today, then I might have thought, oh, the heck, they're they're going to ride with him and trade out from the second. But the longer they, they stay where they are, the more I think that they're either going to go Caleb or Jaden, which you know I'm not a fan of any other quarterback. So I'm going to be a sad boy, I think, in April. But we'll see. Um, so that, that's our one and a half days of free agency. The craziness will continue. We know it. Um, let's see any, uh, yeah, I don't see anything yet right now, but, uh, yeah. So, um, hit us up if you are catching this on YouTube or live, this will also be posted on the podcast, subscribe to everything. And if you're buying any tickets, promo code RTK on seat geek, get 20 bucks off. Coach, anything for the people before we head out? For the Nothing for the people. Just keep, keep, keep loving this. Uh, this free agency. This is this is a great time of the year. Um, it's 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 fun being able to see what craziness happens. Obviously, yesterday was like Christmas morning for us, but we're continuing Insane. into the next couple of days where I think some other, you know, a lot of trades, other surprising things. It's it's these low key moves that are happening that are not the major moves that make the difference. Your Drew Tranquils, uh integral part to us winning a Super Bowl. It's these little things that make the difference. It's not always the big guys. It's not the your Patrick Queens or your Saquon Barkley's. It's 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 the little moves that that sometimes make a big difference. Who knows? Irv Smith could make a big difference next year. I, I don't know. All I can tell you is this. Enjoy it. Look at those little moves that your teams might make. And those typically are the ones that typically make the difference. Patrick Queen ain't gonna win you Super Bowl bowl himself. It's it's a it's obviously a team effort. So enjoy it and yeah we'll come back to you next i don't know when we're coming back but we'll uh, be back soon come back we'll be back soon with that fire if anything else crazy comes out we'll we'll obviously um jump on like you know when justin fields get traded to the raiders we'll jump on that uh just to just just so we can don't go put, live so when, when we go live me. when don't. justin fields gets traded to the raiders brennan will vomit projectile vomit online so that'll be that'll be a good you know it'll be a good it's making clip. me nauseous just thinking about it Jeff, it'll be a good gif to clip you know when you find out that GIF. you get justin fields and you throw up all over your computer yeah no i don't want to see it but we will have an episode if that happens but i'll be doing that, that don't let your kids listen to that one all right we'll see you all next time right in the kingdom